Hey guys, my name is Carlos Mendez and I'm a 3D artist using SolidWorks Visualize. In today's quick tip, I'll be showing you how to use the part splitter. So when you bring geometry into SolidWorks Visualize, sometimes the software will group um, some meshes together. And there'll be instances where you'll need to separate them, be it for an animation that you want to create, or maybe you want to apply a different material to a particular part. So the way we do it is we would go into uh, a part splitter mode, which is how I'll show you using the landing gear as an example. Uh, you want to make sure you go up here and make sure you are in the parts uh, selection. So click on that. So I'm going to click on the landing gear. You notice that they're all combined. Uh, in this case, they're called brush nickel. Um, so what we're going to do here is you're going to right click on the landing gear, edit, split part. And you get this simple uh, but useful little pop-up window. This is what's going to determine how we are going to split the part. So I'm going to click on the part and you'll notice that you have this wire mesh uh, overlaying the, the geometry here. So, and you also see there's a slider here. So um, what that represents is the angle of selection and kind of, it represents where the software will kind of cut off and make the distinction between one portion of the part to the next. All right, so we're gonna take it to 180 degrees for this first example. You'll see that the entire kind of mesh is uh, separated from the rest. And we're gonna um, click on execute split. You'll notice that now uh, when I close this, we'll have two parts. We have this component, right? And we have that one and we can treat it. We can animate it at this moment uh, or we can assign a different material and we can render it. However, let me go a little bit in, in depth, uh, kind of trying to explain what that angle is for and how it plays a role in the separation of a part. So let's go back to parts, right click, edit, split part. So if I want to say separate this funnel, this sort of cone shape at the bottom, I would click on it. Again, it, the, it remembers the last uh, degree amount. So I'm going to bring this down and you'll notice as I bring it lower, you'll notice how if I bring it to zero, it just wants to split exactly the polygon that I clicked on the selection. But if I now kind of tweak it up little by little, the selection kind of spills to the adjacent polygons because it calculates that the difference in angle between the polygon that I initially selected and the adjacent ones um, is less than 3.83 degrees. So naturally, as I increase it, it starts to spill onto the other ones, um, onto, into the other adjacent polygons, um, which degrees are, are less than, the, than whatever it is that I'm typing here. To kind of explain that uh, a little bit better, I created a graphic here in Photoshop so you can see. So if this is our funnel, if our, funnel our, our landing gear, and let's say I click on this portion right here, and then I go into part split, it, it, it's really observing uh, and trying to figure out what the adjacent um, degrees are for the polygon. So in this case, if I wanted it to uh, select, if I wanted this selection to kind of include the entire part, I'd have to make sure that for at least the adjacent polygons, my, my slider is above 42 degrees. <clears throat> and the same is for other shapes like a sphere, but in this case, um, the facets are a lot less, uh, the difference between the angle of one facet to the next is a lot lower. So uh, I would expect that number to be a lot lower. And if it's more like a, a box or a square, well, that angle has to be above 90 degrees. So um, back, to, uh, back to SolidWorks, visualize. Um, if I wanted to include the whole thing, I would do 180. Or like I said, let's try just separating this cone portion of it. I'm going to say execute split and I'm going to close. And again, just like the, just like previously, I can give it now a new material. I can, uh, I can animate it or I can give it, um, some sort of motion here. And that's how you do it. I hope this was helpful and I'll talk to you guys soon.